a Catholic university painting that incredibly depicts George Floyd as Jesus Christ has been stolen from university grounds. That's right. In this video, we're going to take a look at the controversy surrounding the painting. We're going to see how at least one person at the university took matters quite literally into his own hands. And stick with me to the very end of this video when I'll show you why this painting represents a left-wing political era that is being rejected by more and more populations all over the world. You're not... Good to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone, patrons all across the globe. Dr. Steve here with you. As you can see, I'm still in uh, rainy Connecticut as I celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday with my family. And as you know, this year, buying Christmas gifts is worse than ever before. Not only are we challenged to buy gifts from woke corporations, but the supply chain has been making shipping times practically unbearable. Thank you, Brandon. Well, guess what? If you click on that link below, those problems are gone. At Turley Talks, we know the importance of supporting the places you love with your dollars. So this year, Black Friday is better than ever before. We've created two incredible bundles just for you that we significantly discounted this holiday season. These two bundles are filled with everything from my books to event tickets, audiobooks and courses, and so much more you're going to absolutely love. Plus, all our shirts are buy two, get one free. It's the perfect gift for the Patriots in your life. So make sure to hurry, click on that link before these amazing Black Friday deals are gone. And let's make this the best Patriot Christmas ever. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. The Catholic University of America is turning heads of late by the fact that they both commissioned and then hung up a painting depicting George Floyd as Jesus Christ. I kid you not, this is not from the Babylon Bee. This is not satire. As you can see, the painting, which hung in the university's law office or law school, depicts George Floyd as Jesus Christ having just been crucified and held in the arms of the Virgin Mary. It's classically known as the Pietà pose. Michelangelo, for example, is one of the most stunning and beautiful Pietas ever sculpted, which today is in the Vatican in Rome. And as you can see, we've clearly taken several steps back as a civilization in terms of our capacities for creating art and beauty. Now, a number of students at the Catholic University were rightly stunned and shocked by this painting. One student in particular has stood up and called the painting, quote, heretical, blasphemous idolatry, and has started a petition calling for the school to completely remove it from uh, the premises of the university. Blaine Craig, a uh, junior at Catholic University of America, said, quote, Jesus has been depicted as many different races, but Jesus is always depicted as nothing but Jesus, the sinless son of Almighty God. There has never, to my knowledge, been any serious, respected Catholic theologian or icon maker who's depicted Jesus Christ as another human being. And of course, that's because such a depiction would make that human being equivalent to Christ. Unfortunately, university officials are turning a total deaf ear to such demands for the painting's removal. One university official actually said, quote, there are those who would like to see George Floyd as the male figure and the icon. That's not how we read it. The image represents to our community a good faith attempt to include religious imagery on campus that reflects the universality of the Catholic Church. Well, it appears that that universality now includes depicting George Floyd as Jesus Christ. This is how, frankly, absurd leftists are willing to go when it comes to their true faith, which, as we'll find, is in fact Marxism, not Christianity. Now, an interesting thing here happened, uh, happened in the face of the administration's deafness to student concerns. The original painting hanging in the law school has since been stolen. It was just a few days back, but it looks like someone or some ones in the university were not taking no for an answer. The school has since unfortunately replaced the original with a smaller copy that currently hangs in place of the original that we can safely assume will not be resurfacing anytime soon. Now, at one level, this is not surprising, unfortunately, and that's because the term social justice that we hear all the time surrounding George Floyd, it actually goes back to Catholic philosophers. It's a term that was first, it first surfaced in the 1840s among Catholic thinkers to refer to a new kind of virtue necessary for post agrarian societies, but eventually got co-opted by neo-Marxist intellectuals and redefined in accordance with what scholars call emancipatory politics. And emancipatory politics 
is a globalist inspired political idea that re envisions the state as this grand liberator of people groups, which are considered to have been otherwise disenfranchised from the political process. And so, what emancipatory politics does is it views societies and races and genders in light of power discrepancies, where a dominant identity or culture that, of course, is usually designated as white and male disenfranchises and discriminates against minority identities and cultures. And the key here is that this is forever the permanent state of society unless or until cultural Marxist liberals come to power. So emancipatory politics is a Marxist political ideal that re-envisions the state as a grand liberator of individuals from traditions and customs that are now deemed oppressive and discriminatory. And so it's becoming increasingly clear that the combination of these two factors, the origins of social justice and 19th century Catholic social thought on the one hand, and its Marxist globalist co-opting on the other, has combined to shape the worldview of the left wing of the Catholic Church. So as it turns out, the left wing of the Catholic Church is no different from the left wing in any other modern Western nation. It's thoroughly globalist, it's thoroughly left wing liberal, it's emancipatory, and it's wholly at odds with a classically Catholic conception of the world, since the whole point of Marxist globalist liberalism is to emancipate populations from precisely the kind of world that conservative Catholicism helped shape. What makes liberalism liberal and Marxism Marxist, as it were, is the promise of liberation from the supposedly oppressive social institutions that govern the world prior to the rise of Marxist liberalism, which, of course, includes the social institutions of the Catholic Church. So this painting has got to be one of the most ridiculous examples of what's called ecophobia or the hatred of one's own. It literally me means the fear of one's own, one's own household. Ecophobia, it's also some pronounce it oikophobia. This painting is symbolic of the liberal wing of the Catholic Church basically hating on itself. And it's so sad given that so much of the world is turning away from all this nonsense. The world is becoming less liberal and more traditionally and religiously conservative. But before we get into that, I have exciting news. If you haven't heard, we have Mike Lindell joining me live on our Insiders Club Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So if you've never joined our club and been a part of our live virtual studio audience, this is the time to do so. This is your opportunity to ask Mike your questions and discuss all the things we can't get into here. Plus, we've added an additional week absolutely free for members who sign up today. So click on that link in the description below to sign up for 14 days free in our Black Friday promotion. And I'll see you 8 p.m. Eastern with live with Mike Lindell. It's going to be awesome. One of the major reasons why this Catholic university and what they're doing here is so ridiculous is that the world is moving away from this leftist nonsense. We did a video a few months back on how the Taliban, who've been remodeling Kabul, shall we call it, they've been painting over all these murals and monuments and replacing them with slogans celebrating the victory of the Taliban and reconquering Afghanistan. We did a video on how one of those murals that they destroyed was none other than a mural dedicated to George Floyd. Last June, as reported by Reuters, a group of art activists known as Art Lords climbed ladders up one of the many blast walls snaking through the Afghanistan capital of Kabul to paint a mural of George Floyd as all the race riots broke out across our nation in solidarity with the BLM rioters. Well, the days of that kind of liberalism in Afghanistan are over. Those murals are now gone, and it would appear permanently so. The George Floyd mural was painted over by the Taliban with written messages of national unity, praise for the Mujahideen, the jihadist freedom fighters, and celebrations of their triumph against the 20 year occupation of the United States. And this defacing and destruction of George Floyd murals has almost frankly become commonplace throughout the West. And I'm not just talking here in the United States. The BBC recently reported on a mural in Manchester, England which has been repeatedly defaced and destroyed. The Washington Post reported on the destruction of a Floyd mural in Paris of late. And of course, those incidents mirror the countless examples of Floyd murals being defaced throughout the United States. And what we're seeing here in this dialectic between painting and defacing, whether it's in Kabul or Kansas City, I would argue is the same thing. 
It's a civilizational clash between globalism and nationalism, between modern secularism versus religious traditionalism. And I think to the shock of many conservative Catholics, the elitist liberal leadership of the university are siding with the secular globalists, all in the name of an inclusive Catholicism. It's just so sad and absurd. And just goes to show how clueless some of the Catholic leadership today really is. They're living in an old world where Marxist liberalism was seen as the hope for all mankind by leftist Catholics elites, and they're absolutely clueless to the fact that that world is dead. A new world of religious traditionalism is rising up all over the globe, and as things stand, that world promises to be leaving these silly institutions like the Catholic University of America deservedly behind. Now, before you go, if you want to see what a real Catholic nation is doing right now, you'll definitely want to check out my latest video on how the nation of Poland is faithfully defending its borders against a migrant invasion. It's going to so inspire you. Absolutely make your day. So make sure to click on that link and I will see you over there. God bless and a blessed Thanksgiving weekend.